Hi there, I'm reading from my sports memoir, Gloves Off. This is an excerpt from the second chapter about Bill Walsh, and it also deals with Bill's death. After Bill Walsh stepped down as general manager of the Niners and now was merely called a consultant, he called me at home. This would have been 2001. Walsh's voice shook. He said John York had humiliated him. Humiliated was the word he used. It was about a car. Walsh was talking so fast, I had trouble keeping up. Something about York inviting him to lunch and asking if he still drove a 49ers car and Walsh saying yes, and York saying he no longer deserved a 49ers car. Bill said to me, he could have asked the secretary to phone me. You don't invite me to lunch for that. He humiliated me. I never understood the car issue or even if it happened or what it meant. But Walsh was beside himself. Bill Walsh never liked John York. Or Bill would call me about the Oakland Raiders. Walsh always would bring up Raiders defensive coordinator Rob Ryan, whom he called a fat fuck. Ryan's gut preceded him by a half foot and hung over his belt like a water bag. His gray hair was long and uncombed, and all in all, he looked like he had just crawled out of the hamper. Walsh had disdain for fat people. He was trim, worked hard to look good, and he insisted his coaches keep fit and cut an athletic image. Walsh constantly phoned Al Davis about Ryan and said, you've got to fire that fat motherfucker. One day, Walsh phoned me in 2006. His voice was soft, and I heard strange noises in the background. Where are you, Bill, I asked. Stanford Hospital. What are you doing there, I asked. Just here for some tests? Tests? They're checking something, he said. What are they checking? My blood. Your blood? And now, Ira Miller and I were sitting in Bill's backyard in 2007, drinking Chardonnay and eating sandwiches I had uh, brought for lunch. He was eating the mortadella because his wife, Jer Jerry, was of Italian descent, and she cooked Italian, and he loved mortadella. He looked at me and pointed to his mouth. I didn't know what he meant. He did it again, pointed to his mouth, and then he pointed at me. You have mayonnaise on your lip, he said. I was eating the turkey, and I got mayo on my lip. I wiped it off. I still think about Walsh and the mayonnaise because it's one of the last things we ever spoke about. Mayonnaise. Why, why was he pointing out the mayo? Was he doing me a favor because anyone would look like a doofus with a glob of mayo on the lip? Was he doing it for himself? Because who wants to stare at a person with a white dollop on the corner of his mouth? Or did Walsh merely want things right? He had a rage for order. Years before, he once walked through the 49ers headquarters and noticed framed photos and artwork were at willy-nilly angles on the wall. He was appalled at such carelessness. He went around the building, straightening the picture frames, and then he had them bolted into place. Players and coaches couldn't help noticing the head custodian was gone a few days later. In the locker room, Walsh always lined up his shoes perfectly in front of his cubicle, his socks neatly folded into each shoe. He demanded absolute precision from his players. His offensive game plans were works of art, Coaches do not write X's and O's. They write O's and triangles. Walsh's O's and triangles were beautiful. Someone could frame them for an art gallery. A man with that sensibility would find misplaced mayo irredeemably inelegant. So I remember the mayonnaise, and it makes me smile. After a while, Walsh began to fade. Ira and I saw him tiring, and we started to leave. He asked us to gather the plates and glasses and carry them to the kitchen. He asked us to place the scraps in the garbage under the sink. He asked us to rinse the dishes and put them in the dishwasher. Jerry likes a neat house, he said. He wearily walked us to the door. So long, men, he said. Not so long, Lowell and Ira. So long, men. He would call his players men during practice. But we weren't his players. He was pulling back from us, making things formal. We will never see Bill again, I told Ira as we drove away. 
Why do you say that, Ira asked? Because he just said goodbye forever. Six weeks later, on July 30, 2007, Bill Walsh died.